Okay, hello and good morning, everyone. Welcome to JFD Traders Espresso with me, that is Owen Charles, because today's the 4th of May 2020. So, yeah, welcome everyone. Welcome to this Monday's morning recorded session where we're going to have a quick look at the markets, a few of the charts, um, the usual stuff. But before we do that, as always, let's quickly have a read through our risk disclaimer. So, the content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation should not be considered as such and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. There's always a few seconds for you to read the rest and we can continue. So now then, um, so I hope you're all um, feeling nice and relaxed after the weekend. Um, so yep, and you're all ready and set for this week. So uh, before we jump into the charts, as always, uh, just a quick mentioning of our JVD YouTube channel, to which you can always subscribe to in order not to miss any of our um, upcoming videos. And of course, our JVD Bank website and specifically our JVD research page um, which we also update on a daily basis. So, yep, feel free to visit us here on jvdbank.com and click on the research tab right there on the top. So I believe you can find something useful here for yourselves. Uh, now then, uh, so this is a quick update on what's happening here globally in terms of the coronavirus. Now the, the figures continue to rise. Um, U.S. is, um, of course, uh, leading uh, this table, uh, not only in, ter in terms of fall infect infected, but also in terms of deaths. So if Italy, for example, um, it's still kind of uh, in second place, uh, US, U.S. Is, uh, tw has twice than this. Um, we, but we can see what else we can see here is that United Kingdom is rapidly catching up here in not only in terms of infections but also in terms of uh, in terms of deaths. So um, also something interesting you can see that Spain overcame Italy by the number of infected. Um, so yep it's a little bit of a mix I would say here. So uh, United Kingdom is on, on fourth in fourth place but however is very close now to overcoming Italy uh, and with the amount of deaths. So well let's see how all this is going to play out. Uh, I hope you all guys are staying safe. Um, now then jumping into the chart um, the first one I want to touch on here is the German DAX. Now, last week the index kind of closed. On Thursday, it closed above this barrier because on Friday it was it was uh, it was it was not open uh, due to Labor Day, and uh, it, on Thursday the index kind of stayed um, stayed above this barrier here, the 10,820 zone. However, uh, looking at the cash index right now, we can see that the price is balancing just slightly below the 10,500 mark, so at around 10,475 zone. So basically, it's it's somewhere now around here. So it has heavily dropped lower. However, it remains uh, somewhere around the uh, the 21 day EMA here on the daily chart. So we'll have a nice opening gap here to the downside. So the in index will be back in this territory. Um, we'll keep on monitoring it. We'll keep on monitoring this level here, the 10,280 zone. That's the lowest point of 2018. Uh, because, as you can see, it acted as a good area of support here in the uh, from around the mid-April. So if we get a drop below this, this kind of increases the chances of a further slide. However, as I've mentioned uh, previously, Ideally, we would prefer to see a drop below this uh, psychological 10,000 zone and then aim for lower levels. Uh, for now, uh, yes, uh, like I said, we will uh, start considering lower areas if we get a drop below this 10,280 zone. Um, but uh, yep, if it um, if it continues to slide and falls below the 10,000 zone, then yep, this is where it could turn out turn out to be ugly for for this index. However, again, do not uh, let's let's put it this way: do not exclude the upside as well, just in case something sh something drastic happens. Um, and uh, yep, if if we get a push back above this 10,820 zone, then maybe uh, we could start aiming for higher levels again, slightly higher 
higher levels of course not much but um, for now for now that's the game plan let's see how all this is gonna play out however um, these are the levels to watch right now so keep your eyes on the 10,280 uh, zone and the uh, 10,820 territory here on the upside FTSE 100 FTSE 100 it, on Friday it slid lower um, looking at the cash index we can see that the price is currently balancing around 5712 territory so basically below the Friday's close also we'll have a nice op little opening gap here to the downside um, we um, what I've mentioned here on la uh, last week was that um, if it falls back below this uh, 5,895 territory, then uh, yes, of course, it kind of increases the uh, increases the chances of a potential further slide. Um, however, to get even more comfortable with lower levels, we would like to see it drop below this 5,500 level. Uh, previously, that was the that's the lowest point of of 2016 guys so uh, we'll keep an eye on this one of course there's a bunch of other support levels around here uh, but this is this is probably the very important this is one to be one of those important ones to keep an eye on so we'll see how it performs around there if it totally ignores this level then well I mean we'll reevaluate everything again for now uh, yes we are leaning a little bit more to the downside however we'll it's it's gonna be a very very cautious uh, cautiously bearish approach I would say uh, because again this could easily shift back reverse quickly back to the upside and well I mean more buyers could be joining in especially if, if it travels back above the 5895 territory so keep your eyes on this one uh, Brent oil now uh, this one's still is stuck so um, I've talked about this one last week and basically I uh, was telling you guys to keep a close eye on the 21 day EMA here and on this barrier the around the 27.18 territory which acted as a fantastic area of resistance uh, this and this one marks the lows of the uh, is marked near the lows of the April 15th and 16th um, so in a way what we're going to do here right now is just going to wait because again although there is a possibility for this one to see maybe a bit of upside however we'll be very careful and cautious because again uh the it's oil right now I mean there's still a, a lack of demand in oil so I'll, uh, maybe this little uh boost higher here was could have been uh, as, a, as a temporary correction here before another leg of selling but in order to aim for lower levels in order for us to get comfortable with that we would like to see a drop below the 21.64 territory and then and then aim for lower levels so keep your eyes on this one uh, let's see how this is gonna play out but uh, yeah for now for now it, it is how it is and uh, well I mean for now it, we ha we just have to kind of wait this one out probably because again like I said with the downside we would like to see a drop below the 21.64 zone here and then target the downside uh, with the upside we would like to see a push above this 27.18 territory I do understand it's closer to this level however again we will remain very careful uh, gold now gold uh, is rebounding today this morning um, as you can see it kind of failed to break that neckline uh, it well it did break it on Friday however it, today uh, and Friday it closed still above it and today it's trying to make its way higher so what we're gonna do here is we're gonna be very very careful now if we get a drop drop below this neckline so-called neckline then yes uh, we could uh, consider maybe lower levels however uh, for now it seems that the mm, the activity here that we're seeing is somewhat um, it could be somewhat of a range here so basically um, in a way for now kind of as long as it stays inside this little range uh, we up we will probably remain overall we will remain neutral but from the very short-term perspective if it starts pushing back above above the uh, 170304 territory somewhere around here then yes we could maybe consider maybe the upside again maybe it, within this within this range I need to specify this uh, because again for now overall we are stuck here so a push above this uh, 1704 territory could do the trick here for more 
buyers and we could see this one pushing uh, a little bit higher here How, uh, however as I said uh, be very careful for now um, let's see how all this is gonna play out but um, yeah if we get a push back above the 1704 territory then yes we will aim for a bit of uh, upside here within the range um, but if it starts falling below this so-called neckline territory, which is around a 1680 zone, then, well, brace yourselves, we could see maybe deeper extensions to the downside. Now, I, um, what we would like to see here is a daily close, a daily close below this uh, 1680 zone, because then, yep, uh, more, uh, maybe more sellers, sellers could join in. Now, Ethereum. Um, Ethereum is on a slide. Um, so after kind of reaching this little target here, the level around the 227.50 zone, it is now drifting back down. Uh, the crypto is sliding towards this upside support line taken from the low of the uh, 13th of May and uh, the big question here is can it rebound from it so previously I talked about this level here to after which we could consider the downside still it's gonna be one of the more comfortable levels for us but we will start looking at uh, lower levels if we get a drop below this uh, zone here uh, let me just quickly mark this one and that's roughly around the 189 zone so if a nice good drop a nice good break of this would also break the this upside support line and yep deeper extensions to the downside could be possible however uh, yes, as I said, we, the more comfortable level for us after which we could consider the downside would be this 176.50 territory and this would also place the um, the crypto below the 200 EMA here on the daily chart and yep, maybe more sellers could see this as a good opportunity to step in. However, as I've mentioned in the before, in the in the beginning of this analysis uh, all eyes right now are on this upside support line let's see if it can provide uh, well decent if, if it can hold uh, the price from moving lower if it can we may see a nice rebound here to the upside if it cannot then well uh, keep your eyes on some lower levels AUD USD. So here it's a very interesting situation. So on one hand, yes, it is drifting lower. However, as I've mentioned pre uh, last week, uh, keep your eyes on this downside line. Um, in a way, this downside line is taken from the high of the 1st of January. Um, and if it provides support, and if it continues to provide support, then we could see a nice rebound here uh, back to the upside. Now, previously, I talked about this level here as well, the 0 0.6445. Uh, but I was also saying that the kind of the last uh, option for the bulls here is around this downside line to kind of rebound from this one. So. Um, however, there's another thing with this downside line because it's a bit of a tentative one. Uh, again, this is something that we draw ourselves, so uh, we kind of uh, we, we keep an eye on some of these lines. Uh, but the other one to keep an eye on, just in case, could be this one right here. Um, now, again, it's I do understand it's kind of a, a, a tricky bit. Um, to be honest, both of these lines are tentative, so uh, probably uh, not much emphasis should be placed on these on these lines. What you could do here is um, keep an eye on the 21-day EMA because if it holds, if it pro continues to provide decent support, then we could see a nice rebound here. So that's why these upside line, these downside lines are both are these are tentative. So yeah, we could keep them on the chart, but just kind of like I said, uh, don't. Uh, overestimate the power and significance of them um, and uh, just like I said I'm keeping these on my chart just uh, to see if actually if they do provide some sort of uh, kind of um, importance uh, for this uh, for the pair um, so um, like I said the main th the main focus right now of course yes uh, uh, on the 21 day EMA uh, keep your eyes on the just in case like I said keep your eyes on these two uh, downside lines one is taken here and the other one is taken right there so uh, let's see if one of these kind of provides a support because that's the reason why I have the downside scenario only from here from the 0 0.62 54 zone somewhere around here that's the low of the uh, 21st of April and the drop below that yep could lead to some lower levels. Uh, USDJPY. Now, USDJPY here, it's a interesting story. Uh, so basically, the the pair is drifting now lower. Um, it 
is balancing below this this uh, this hurdle I talked about last week, the 106.92 zone. Um, for now, we're leading a little bit more to the downside uh, because, as you can see, the pair failed to move above this downside line taken from the high of the 6th of April, and in a way, it kind of increases the chances of a potential further decline. So for now, uh, for those who are more on the cautious side, you could prop what you could do, given that this viol this level got violated. Uh, what you could do now is maybe focus on the low of last week. Uh, and let me just quickly uh, mark that on the chart. So this is roughly around here, around the 106.36. Now this is, like I said, for those who are more on the cautious side, because a drop below this level would confirm a forthcoming lower low, and yep, more sellers could be joining in here. Um, then we could drag maybe the pair towards the 105.92 zone, or even further down. But again, uh, for, like I said, this is this is the for the more for the more cautious ones. Uh, so yep, keep your eyes on this one. Um, we are, like I said, leaning a little bit more to the down. Downside. However, if this suddenly reverses back to the upside, breaks this downside line. Now, this is where, of course, uh, we will uh, take a bit of a more, uh, more let's say, positive uh, side. Um, however, to get a little bit more comfortable with higher levels, a push above the 100 above the 108.08 level would be needed. That's the high of the 16th of April. So keep your eyes on this one. USD CAD. Uh, USD CAD continues to push higher. So uh, this is what I talked about last week. I was telling you guys about this this wide range to kind of keep an eye on. As, and uh, if we get a reversal from this air area here, from this support zone, uh, then yep, keep your eyes on this downside line, which as you can see got violated, um, and the the pair kind of drifted higher and moved above the 21-day EMA. Now it continues to. It seems that it wants to continue drifting higher. We let's. Um, get rid of this downside line because it's no longer uh, valid here. So uh, what we're going to do here is mainly focus on this range. So in a way, for now, yes, we are going to be leaning a little bit more to the upside, maybe, um, and uh, we're but we will only target this this level here, the 1.4261.62 zone, roughly around here, and then yep, we will take it from there. Um, for now. For now, uh, the only thing is that we can, like I said, do is just probably uh, monitor this one. But uh, like I said, we could be leaning a little bit more to the upside. Um, but the upside might get limited near this barrier here. So because we are overall in a in a wide range. Uh, GBP Euro. Um, so with this one, uh, I talked about this one as well. Uh, just a quick update here. Not much is happening. Still, we are in a range. Uh, so we will continue observing this. Um, and uh, if we um, if we get a breakthrough one of the highlighted areas, then we will consider a further directional move. For now, we will stay neutral and just continue observing this one. For now, you can see that the pair is drifting a little bit to the downside. Uh, the euro is slightly on the stronger side. However, let's see if if the uh, if the euro manages to uh, push this pair uh, below the uh, 1.1305 zone. That's the lower bound of the uh, of this little range. Uh, on the upside, we do have this 1.1515 level, which is the upper side of the range. As you can see, it did try it did have an attempt. The pair did have an attempt to overcome this barrier, but however, stayed uh, still below it. So. That's why we'll keep an eye on these two levels. Uh, GBP USD, so this one's sliding lower. Now, this is here something that probably needs to be uh, redrawn a little bit. So, because it's a little bit of a mess. Now, last week I talked about this level here. Um, so, if what I was saying that if we get a break above the 1.2523 territory, then yes, maybe we could see a bit of more upside. We got some upside. Um, uh, the pair the pair drifted higher. However, it found resistance near the 100 EMA here, and then reversed back to the downside. So now it's kind of sli sliding a little bit lower. However, it's getting a hold up near this 21-day EMA on the daily chart. So uh, now let's get rid of also all, all these drawings and uh, probably look at this one from a different perspective. So after we had this nice, of course, uh, sharp reversal back to the upside. Um, so after it kind of fi found support. Uh, around here, near the 1.1414 level, the pair kind of drifted higher, um, made its way all the way to the uh, to the two, to the 100 EMA here initially, uh, hit the level around uh, 1.2648 zone, or we, in a way you could, we could round it up towards the 50. So 1.2650 that became a strong barrier to watch, and as you can see, last week the pair 
also uh, the pair also tested almost tested kind of that area um, and uh, well it then from there it kind of drifted back down so uh, what we can say is that this barrier for us now will be somewhat of an important one because again we would like to see a clear break above this ideally we would like to see a, uh, a daily a daily candle closing above this as well and uh, as you can see it's not far from the 200 EMA here on the daily chart so maybe just uh, an additional push above this 200 day EMA uh, could do the trick for more buyers um, now in terms of the downside as you can see it's now drifting a little bit lower now uh, some might say that this could be a range here however I wouldn't really it's not really a, a, a nice ideal range so what we're gonna do here is we're gonna going to keep an eye on this little short-term tentative upside support line. So um, now, but uh, with the downside, we would, in order for us to get comfortable with lower levels, uh, we would like to see a drop uh, below this little area right here. So initially we would like to see a drop below the 20, 1.2247 zone and then a drop below the 1.2166 in order to get comfortable with lower levels. So for now, uh, uh, for now, like I said, uh, we will, of course, yes, there there is a chance for this one to slide a little bit lower. However, if this upside line uh, is gets supported, uh, or should I say this upside line supports the, the chart, then uh, the graph, then, yep, we could see a nice rebound and a push higher. But uh, for those, who, uh, like I said, to be more on the safe side, uh, the upside, we will only uh, examine that one if we get a push above this barrier here, the uh, 1.2650 zone. So keep your eyes on this one. Euro Aussie, quick update here. Um, so this one is struggling with the 21-day EMA, as you, see, as you can see. Um, yes, it did push higher. It, overall, the, the kind of the outlook still remains more positive than negative however maybe we could see a bit of a correction here to the downside and then maybe a push another push higher um, for now um, yes like I said we will be very careful um, because as you can see the pair is did have an attempt to push higher above the 21 day EMA it did so but um, now you can see that the mm, the pair is kind of uh, correcting back down let's see if the the, uh, well, if the pair decides to actually drift a little bit lower, and if it does, then keep your eyes on the 1.70 territory here, that psychological 1.70. Uh, if it provides support, we could see a nice rebound and a push higher, uh, where we can target the 1.73.50.51 zone. Uh, but if it starts dropping below this, then this is where we're going to be a little bit on the neutral side. For us to get excited about the downside, we would need to see, well, we will only wait for, uh, well, we'll wait for a drop below this territory here. Um, below the 1.6540 zone and then target lower levels because this would confirm a forthcoming lower low and uh, yep further declines could be possible and finally euro usd so this one is as you can see sliding lower now i talked about the upside here uh what i was uh, last week what i was saying that if we get a break above this little barrier as you can see by the little little arrow that I've got here, uh, if we get a push above this 1.0990 uh, zone, then yes, uh, we could aim for for further upside. Uh, we will initially only target the 1.1039 zone uh, because that's around the 200 EMA on the daily chart. However, this morning we're seeing a bit of a decline here. We're seeing that the pair is drifting lower. Um, now what we're gonna do here is we're gonna keep an eye on the 21 day EMA. Uh, we'll see how it performs around there, how the pair performs around around that uh, that line. Um, if it provides support, then we could see a nice rebound and a push higher. Um, for us to e examine the downside, as I've mentioned pre last week and probably the week before that even, we need to see a nice daily close below this 1.0777 zone and then we could aim for lower levels for now. Uh, we, this little move lower could still be seen as a temporary correction before another leg of buying. So uh, let's see how this is going to play out. Yes, I mean, it is drifting lower for now, but again, this could be still a little correction before another leg of buying. So keep your eyes on this one. Uh, for those who are more on the cautious side, you could just wait for a push up of the 1.0990 level and then aim for higher levels. For now, uh, let's be very careful with this one, guys. Uh, today is not a very eventful day um, in terms of economic data. We do have some German PMIs, the Eurozone PMIs coming out, uh, manufacturing PMIs, of course. Uh, 
but uh, yeah, not not much happening on the calendar. Um, how, so, however, keep your eyes on the political situation um, in general between uh, China and U.S. and, of course, the whole situation around surrounding the coronavirus. So, um, well. Let's see how all this is going to play out. So I hope you all guys are going to stay safe. Thank you very much for watching and listening. Uh, thank you very much for all this, for your time. I really appreciate that. And uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you found it useful. So if you want to catch my uh, video later on, my traders tea time, 13, 15 GMT as always um, around that time. Um, and uh, yep, we'll have a look at some of these instruments, some new ones, and then we'll take it from there. Thank you, thank you very much, guys, and have a wonderful trading day. Bye-bye.